Welcome to the second episode of the series on physical computing. In the first episode, we got our feet wet with the Hello World version of physical computing, which is to blink an LED. In today's video, we're going to take things a little bit further by exploring the different types of sensors and learning how to read and write both digital and analog signals. A quick recap, digital signals are on and off signals like flipping a switch, while analog signals measure a range of values. And we're going to be using a button to read digital signals and a potentiometer to read analog signals. And then once we have those signals or those data, we're going to use an Arduino to process it and then send it or write it to an LED to turn it on and off like what we did in the first episode and also to vary the brightness of the LED. All right, we're going to start by doing the circuit. I'm coming to the Arduino website here and then there is an example on how to wire and program a button. And let's look at the hardware that we need. So basically we need an Arduino board a momentary button or switch, 10k ohm resistor, some hookup wires, and a breadboard. And if you look at the circuit here, this is how we're going to be wiring it. And I just realized that in the first video, I never actually explained how a breadboard works. So a breadboard is a prototyping tool for building and testing electronic circuits without having to do any soldering. There are different sections. One is called the power rails, and then the other is called the terminal strips. So the power rails are these two sides that you see with the plus and minus labels. And each column is a continuous line of connected holes running along the length of the breadboard. Meaning that if you connect a 5 volts pin to the hole or a ground pin to the hole, the entire column becomes positive or negative. But each rail is not connected to each other, so they only connect in one singular column. And as for the terminal strips, Instead of column, it's the rows that are connected to each other and each row of five holes is connected internally within the row but not to the other rows. So on this circuit here, what's happening is that the five volt pin and the ground pin is actually connected to the power rails here, right? The power pin here, the five volts is connected to the side that is positive and then the ground is connected to the side that is negative. So this whole column is now negative and this whole column here is now positive. Instead of having to wire the button or the resistor directly to the Arduino, now you can actually just wire it to the power rails. Okay, so I'm going to start to put things together. So once we have the circuit all wired up, I'm going to connect it to my computer. And now I'm going to open the Arduino IDE. First, what we're going to do is that we're going to actually making sure that we select the board, which is this Arduino Uno here. And then now I'm going to declare a few variables for my button and also the pin and also the state of my button. So we're going to start with int because it's going to be an integer. And then let's do button pin. Set it to 2 because that is the pin that we connected our button to, right? And then another one is button state. And I'm going to set it equals to 0 to initialize it. So it's either going to be on or off, 0, 1, or high or low. 0 equals to low or off, and then 1 is high or on. And then inside setup, what we want to first do is that we need to use the function pin mode to initialize the fact that this button pin is going to be an input pin. So we just put in the first argument as the pin itself, button pin, and then the second argument is input or output, and in this case it is an input. 
And then inside loop, now we want to be reading this digital signals, right? So we basically just set button state to be equals to digital read, right? And then inside here, we're going to be putting in which pin is it going to read from. So pin number two, button pin. And I can just verify it and upload now, which is fine. Why don't we just do that? But then the issue is, I have no idea. Even if I'm clicking my button like this, I have no idea what I'm reading, what is the state of the button, right? So we actually need to use some kind of communication between the Arduino and my computer. And that kind of communication is called a serial communication. So all we need to do is that first, we need to initialize this way of communication by inside setup, just put in serials dot begin and then give it an argument of a set of numbers. We're going to put in 9,600. Actually, this is called a baud rate and that is how fast we're going to be transmitting this data. And 9,600, the unit is bits per second. And 9,600 is fast enough for some simple applications like reading sensors, which is what we're currently doing. And then inside loop here, we're going to be printing out the values, right, of the button state here. So all we need to do is serial.print and then what are we printing? We're printing the button state. So this is very similar to the print command or the console lock command when we do it on our P5 sketch. So now let's upload it again. So now in order for us to actually read the data that is being transmitted through the serial communication, you need to go to tools and then serial monitor. And as you can see here, the numbers are just like going all the way to the right. So I'm actually going to edit the code. Instead of just doing print, we're going to do print line. So it's going to be print LN. And then let's click upload one more time. And as you can see here, each time it is being printed, it is going to a different line. So that's going to be easier for us to read. And if I click the button, you can see it becomes number one. I release the button, becomes zero. Click one, release zero. And now it is, it keeps going down and down and down. So if we want to go back, it's actually quite difficult. So if you don't want it to auto scroll down like this, you can click this button here and then it just stops the auto scrolling. And now you can just move this scrolling thing on the right to see the message that are up above so that's how you can read the data of the state of the button based on your clicking all right one and zero one and zero perfect all right so let me show you something so if i were to create another variable called counter and then every time Every time the button state is equals to one, which is high, then I want to increment the counter by one. And then how about we print it out what the counter value is. So I press once and you can see that the values now is 97. <laughs> it goes up really high, right? And that is because of the mechanical nature of a button. So basically inside a mechanical switch, there's this springy metal part that you lift or let go every time you press or release a button. And this springy part basically bounces a little bit at the beginning and at the end when you press and release. And so 
the Arduino sometimes will register that as multiple bounces even though or multiples on or off even though you only click the button once so we can fix this quite easily using the code and there are two ways that we can do it by first using a delay command which we used in the previous episode to pause the program and we can just put in an argument of 100 milliseconds or just even like 50 milliseconds which will help this issue quite a bit so why don't we try that so if I were to just put delay by 100 all right and then now one two three four five six you can see that it fixed the problem um, quite well um, but if you still see some issues it might be because the number that you put here is maybe not short enough but the issue with delay is that it actually pauses everything in your program so if you have other parts of the program that needs to be run continuously this delay command will pause that as well so to solve this issue we're actually going to be implementing a different way without using the delay command so this way what we're going to do is that we're going to use a timing function to actually monitor how long it has been since the button has been stable so there is no more bouncing before we change the state of the button so we're going to be declaring a few variables. The first one, I'm going to call it last the bounce time and I'm going to set it equal to zero. And now instead of using int here, we're going to be using a new data type called unsigned long and unsigned longs basically store large integers that are positive. And the reason that we want this data type is because let me show you. So we're going to set it equals to, let me set last debounce time to be equals to milli. And milli basically returns the time that has passed in milliseconds since the current program has been running. So as you can imagine, if we run it for a long time, it is going to become really large, really fast. So let me just print it to show you last debounce time all right and as you can see here it just keep going up and up and up and up and up all right so that's why we set it as the type of unsigned long and then the next one we can just use int, it is going to be delay debounce time. And this is basically the 100 milliseconds that we had previously, or we can set it as 100 as before, or you can set it smaller. And then now what we want to do is that inside the loop here, what I'm, I'm gonna do, actually, I'm going to start from scratch. So let's just delete this. So basically right here, everything is the same in setup. Inside loop here, I want to set a new variable called reading. And I'm going to set reading to digital read, right? So the same thing, we're basically written the button, the button pin. And then what we want to do is that we want to check if this reading value is not equals to the last button state which we also have to declare. So we basically have the current button state, which we have here, and then we're gonna have the last button state here. This is for us to compare before we set that button state to be the current reading. And so once we have here, so if reading is not equals to last button state, it means that maybe we are pressing the button right now. Then what we want to do is that we want to first set last debounce time to be equals to millis, right? So set it to a specific time. And then after that, we want to check if last debounce 
time minus milli is greater than delay bounce time. This means that that time has passed 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds or however long you have used as the delay bounce time. Then if reading is not equal to the button state, then now we know after the time has passed, then the reading is still not equal to button state. It means that we actually have clicked the button. Then we want to set the button state to reading. And then if button state is actually high, then how about we just print out counter and we also need to increment it by one, right? And then after all of this, then we want to set last button state to be equals to button state. And then we do it all over again. All right, and let's try to upload it. Oops, what is wrong? Delay bounce time, delay, oh. Delay debounce time. Delay debounce time. The error message here is kind of scary. It's kind of big. All right, and let's look at our zero monitor here. Once I click, oh, let me just go back here. Once I click, one, two, three. Even if I hold it, it still register as 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. So this is how we fix the bouncing problem by doing this debouncing code. Now what I want to do is that I want to wire the LED so that every time that we click the button, then we turn on the LED. So it is going to be the exact same wiring that we did previously. So, 13, and then the other side will go to ground. All right, so what we need to do is that we need to write some additional code. So we're going to, how about I put it on top here, int LED pin, set it to 13, and then inside setup here, we need to also initialize the LED pin as an output pin, right? And then inside loop here, what we want is that instead of just add the counter here, we're going to actually write, digital write to the LED pin as high when this is pressed and then else then we're going to write digital write as low all right on off Perfect. So now we're basically sending digital signals to the LED using a button. So next, what we're going to do is that we're going to now using a potentiometer to read analog signals. So why don't we go back to the documentation page just to see how we can wire this. All right, so what do we need? So the hardware required. Oh, okay. So we need an Arduino board, a potentiometer, and in this specific example, they want me to get three LEDs and three 20, 220 ohm resistors. So I'm not going to be doing the exact same thing. I want to just follow the part where they wire the potentiometer. So if you look at here, the potentiometer comes with three legs. One side is going to ground, the other side is going to power. 5 volts and then the middle part goes to pin and it goes to 
an analog pin, A3. So that's what we're going to do. Let's start by declaring the potentiometer sensor. So let's do pot sensor, pot pin, how about that? Set it to A3. And then we're going to declare pin mode as pot pin input. And then Inside loop here, we're gonna do. Oh, we need to first do serial dot begin for nine thousand six hundred, right? And then we're gonna do. We're gonna declare one more variable. Let's call it pot value. Set it equals to zero. And then inside loop, we're going to set pot value to be equals to analog read, right? And we're reading what we're reading the pot pin. And then we're going to print out the value. We're going to do print line. And we're going to print out the pot value. <laughs> All right. Let's upload. OK, and then let's go to tools and then serial monitor. All right. So I'm turning it all the way to the left here. We get it at 10.23 and then I turn it all the way to the right, we get zero. So actually, what if I switch between ground and power in terms of the left and the right leg? All right, so now actually it just switched the value that are given here. So when I turn it all the way to the right, it becomes 10.23 and when I turn it all the way to the left, it becomes zero. So the two different legs actually gives you the different values. It basically switches, right? It switches the circuit basically. Now what I want to do is that I want to use this value to actually control the brightness of the LED. But the brightness of the LED actually goes between zero and 255. So first I'm going to declare a variable called LED pin and actually going to set it to pin number three, which is a PWM and pin. And as I said in the previous episode, that PWM and pins allows us to simulate analog signals using digital signals by turning it on and off very quickly. And then inside setup, we just need to set pin mode to set LED to as an output pin, right? And then here, we're going to actually declare a variable called brightness because the brightness for the LED only range between 0 to 255 I'm going to map the value of pot value that goes between 0 and 1023 to 0 and 255 and then I'm going to use a function called analog write to write the brightness value to the LED pin brightness and then how about we print out so we can do this. I want to print three lines. The first line, so I want to print it all in one line. So the first one will be pot value and then I want to give it a little bit of a spacing and then I want a print line on the third one which is going to give me brightness and then this will all be in one line. Let's upload. I turn it all the way to the right and the LED is at its brightest. And then I turn it all the way down, down, down. And as you can see here, it slowly decreases until it turns off. And now I turn it back on again. So it's bright again. And then I turn it back off. Alright, so this is the end of the episode. So in today's video, I hope that you 
get a better understanding of how to read and write digital and analog signals using some sensors such as the button, the potentiometer, and our LED. So stay tuned for the next episode.